What's going on everybody? My name is Isaac Hongos. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Nikon F, its build quality, some results, and my personal thoughts at the end of this video. So, what is the Nikon F? The Nikon F is Nikon's first SLR released, whew, when the dinosaurs were alive most likely, but it's a very interesting camera. My first initial impression when I first got the camera in my hands was the weight. The weight is insanely heavy. It looks like a small object, but there's just so much metal parts condensed into one little square that it's actually very, very heavy. This thing could actually give you an entire head injury if you tried hard enough or you swung the wrong way. But that was like the first noticeable aspect of the camera that I just felt was very, very well done. I like a nice heft, but this was like slightly too heavy. So I'd probably suggest not carrying it around your neck. Let's examine the top section of the camera and you'll find your standard mode dial, which lets you shoot up to one thousandth of a second. And for me, this was the most challenging part with this camera. I've always been used to shooting at one four thousandth of a second. So this was very difficult to do, especially in bright daylight, uh, you know, just applying that sunny 16 rule and also getting some help from this application right here, right here wherever the square is for the YouTube videos. Um, that's the application that I use because film is going up in price and I wanted to get the best results possible. So if you're like me and want to get the best results from your film, I just suggest using an application. Plus being able to get a shallow depth of field is something that I just always aim for. Following the shutter speed wheel, we also get your A and R dials. The A stands for automatic or whatever they called back then automatic, just essentially moving the roll from one place to another, just like a standard film camera would do. Then you have your R, which is rewind. And this essentially just lets you rewind the camera, move it forward or backwards inside the body. Next, we have the shutter release button, very standard and common. And you also have a little reminder on the top wheel that lets you know whether you're shooting 20 or 36 rolls. I personally always shot 36 rolls. One of them was Ektar 100 and Portra 400, just as a baseline. And here's a little funny story. Um, you had to turn clockwise when you're rewinding the film, right? I'll link a video down below on how to load the camera, but you essentially just rewind it clockwise. I accidentally did a counterclockwise and uh, exposed the film. So if you're only seeing 30 shots, you know why. The bottom of the camera doesn't have too many things going on, aside from which ISO speed you're shooting and the release lever to switch between your films or as you're rewinding from a finished canister. The overall design is one that I'm not a particular fan of. It has this sort of boxy square looking design and it's just very true to the times that they were living in, but it's just a little bit too square. It's a little bit too long. There's no grip to the camera. These were all probably things that they didn't even think about because the first SLR from Nikon, right? So I'll give them a pass on that. And adding to the accessories, there is this top viewfinder accessory, which I've had top viewfinders before. On a TLR, it's kind of inverse image, right? So I personally didn't want to get it for this camera because heck, I'm going to run into the same issue. But the more that I shot it, the more I wanted the top viewfinder because the buttons, which are really well made, tactile, and still feel very brand new, you know, just a testament to the engineering back then were very difficult to move. Even though it's an old camera, they still feel new, they still feel clicky, and they're still very hard to turn. As the camera was right in front of me, I would have to hold it like this, right? The camera body here, and then the mode dial, and then I would use two fingers. Is that a big deal? Well, if someone's right in front of me and I'm trying to take the shot, and I'm going like this and taking up time, then it is kind of a big deal if you're doing it like 50 times throughout the day, right? So if you're looking into buying this camera, I'd probably suggest getting it with the top viewfinder and deciding whether or not you like it. It's better to have it and then get rid of it than to not have it and then go out and shoot and you know get frustrated over the camera. I personally use the 35 millimeter and 50 millimeter. I didn't really see too much of a difference. I like the 35 millimeter just a bit more because it's F2 and it's a little bit more compact than the 50 millimeter. But other than that, it wasn't too much of a huge deal. It just depends on your style. And you know, lenses for this body are relatively cheap and you can still use modern glass with them. The advantages of shooting with Nikon, right? Lastly, let's look at some of my results.
those are the results that I got for this camera. Hopefully it gives you an idea to what you might potentially get if you were to purchase the system. For me, if I could title this camera with just one word, it would be underwhelming. I understand the historical part of this camera. It was the first SLR. Professionals were going from a camera that could potentially take up an entire car, metaphorically, for an example, and going to this very small device, much like how we went from this huge phone to this really tiny and slim piece of technology that we carry in our pockets. The Nikon FM2 just does so many things much better. And although they're not the same lineup, they're kind of cousins and related. And I was constantly comparing the two because it kind of feels like they're the same era camera, but they're clearly very far apart. So Nikon had some time to mature. The limitation for me was at one one thousandth of a second. I'm very used to one four thousandth of a second. And that's just how I personally like to shoot. Maybe that's why I didn't have as much fun with this camera. And you know, it's built really great, but that's a huge limitation for me personally. And you know, it might be fun for you to challenge yourself, shoot at one one thousandth of a second, see what you can do different in your portraiture work or in your landscape work. But to me, it's just like, oh, I really need that one four thousandth of a second to, you know, just keep on working. But it was a nice challenge. Other than that, I don't have too many things to say about the camera. It's a very short review. If you'd like to, you know, just send your friends the cliff notes of this video, you can check out the short right here, or you can follow me on Twitter or the foundation app if you could upvote me on there as your boy is trying to sell some NFTs. Let me know what your thoughts are. Are you thinking about purchasing the system or do you already have it? And do you have that top viewfinder? Because now I regret not shooting with it throughout the review. At the end of the day, I thank you so much for your time and your attention. My name is Ashby Hongos, and I'll catch you in the next one.